Hey, what's up guys? I'm super excited to show you my new boat and do a full review of the 23 foot Deep V Pathfinder. Um, I want to show you some of the work and modifications I did to it and just the whole layout of this boat. So let's start with the deck and gunnels. All right, first big thing you notice about this boat, for me personally, I have to have a flat deck. No steps, um, flat deck, and this boat is all about storage, storage, and more storage. That's what impresses me about this boat is that every inch of the floor is used as storage, okay? Um, gunnel height is a perfect height. When I come in here, I'm six foot tall and it's hitting me right above my kneecap. I don't like gunnels higher than that. And we, when we walk up front, you'll see the gunnels, they come up a bit, but they're not too high. All right, if I'm throwing my cast net, I can throw my net from anywhere in this boat, okay? Eight foot six beam, 23 foot six overall. Closed transom, which for me is huge because you could reverse in this boat in chop and you're not taking any water over the, over the transom. My previous boat, the 21 Contender, and I had a 21 Steyercraft before that, there have cutouts in the transom. So every time you're reversing, or drifting stern into the chop, you're getting water always through the transom. This boat is not gonna do that, okay? Um, also, last thing about the gunnels that I wanna talk about is the thickness of the gunnel. Now this boat, 8.6 uh, beam, okay? I could walk 360 degrees around this boat. I could have my cast net fully loaded, throw from anywhere in this boat. I mean, really impressive just the way that they laid this boat out. Um, Let's talk about power real quick. Now we just, we got 20 minutes on this brand new Suzuki 250. Haven't it broken in yet, so I don't have numbers yet. But one with a 250, um, this should give the boat plenty of power. We'll, we'll do numbers at a late, uh, later time and fuel economy. Um, first thing in the back that's really cool is the pitch wells right here on both sides of the boat. These pitch wells are two gallon live wells that are fed by a separate live well pump, separate from their main live well. What you use these for is when you're resetting your drift. All right, you have your, your live bait on your hook. You keep your bait in there, so it keeps it fresh. As you're moving the boat from drift to drift, your bait goes in there. Super pumped to finally have some pitch wells in my boat. All right, plenty of ride storage in the gunnel. Let's talk about one of my favorite things. And this was the demise of my last boat, and that's bilge excess. My last boat, the bilge excess was, uh, I, don't, I don't know the words to describe it, deplorable. I could barely fit my arm in there. So you could imagine how angry I got every time I had to fix something on my bilge pump. I was in nearly in a blind rage because it was so difficult. So I'm gonna open up this hatch. What I did on all the uh, hatches here is I put a little, I marked the um, open side with red um, paint so you know when it's open and when it's closed, you don't see the red, okay? Now this is entirely removable. So when we're working here, we take this right off. And if you wanna come in here and just, if you could, you might be able to see this, but three seacocks fed, okay? Two live well pumps feeding our main live well, other live well pump feeding our pitch wells, and just everything is accessible. Fuel water separator filter, okay? All the drainage of this boat we'll get into. Everything is very accessible, very easy to work on this. Um, it's going to de-stress my life dramatically because any boat owner, captain, hardcore, angler or weekend warrior the biggest stress is fixing stuff on your boat you want to make it as easy as possible next dual fish boxes now this is the problem with a lot of boats a lot of center console boats are making out don't have a place to put your catch i'm a catch and release guy however we like to go out and keep some black sea bass we like to keep an occasional striped bass where do you put it? You don't want a big cooler on the deck of the boat. This has two very big fish hatches, um, fish boxes, sorry, with macerator pumps. So that will 
chop up all the scales and all the excess, okay? We have another storage compartment back here with our Aramar through-haul transducer. It's a B164 we're running right now. We may upgrade that in the near future uh, to a chirp transducer, but more storage. Let's look at the live well. Live wells. I love live bait fishing. What makes me very angry is when my bait dies. And a lot of times it's due to a live well being too small, not having the proper water exchange. And this boat has a massive 47 gallon live well fed by dual pumps. Super excited. All the live well switches are right here for our pumps, okay? Um, very accessible. We got a little bit of tackle storage here. This whole panel pulled out. We went through, we checked all the wiring. Everything was looked great. So this is good to go. Um, moving forward, we're gonna come. Actually, there's one more thing I wanna show you in the deck of this boat that really impressed me. If you look on the boat in the channels, the whole parameter of the boat is channeled. All the hatches are channeled and drained. So you'll never be standing in water in this boat. These channels are about two inches deep. You're always gonna have dry feet. It's the first boat I've owned where I don't have to worry about wearing boots every single day on this boat. Let's move over to the console. Massive console. First thing we did was I got rid of that T-top. This had a big T-top. I said, that thing is coming off. I don't like big T-tops. They get in the way when we're casting. People are breaking the rod tips on the T-top. So we got rid of that. I had a custom top made, just enough, just to cover my head, give me a little bit of sun protection. Um, we had a piece of, um, this is a plexiglass material. It's thicker than isoglass, which is 30 gauge. It's 60 gauge glass, so it's gonna be more rigid. We did that for a little bit of wind and spray protection. Um, next thing I did was I tore out, there was an electronics box here. I tore that out. I don't want my electronics recessed. We got a piece of starboard, cut this out. Dual Hummingbird Solix 12s are in here. VHF radio, USB charging port. Um, we went with a digital fuel monitor system, the C10 gauge for the Suzuki. Um, we have a stereo here with four speakers. Um, our cup holders are plumbed and drained so they don't fill up with water and that water does not nothing in this console will drain water so the console is completely waterproof um a big thing for me is going to be um rod storage because i normally am carrying a dozen rods so what we have here 10 rods or five rods on each side so a total of 10 in the console you never want your rods hanging out in the way you want them in the center of the boat also under gunnel we have two more additional rod holders on each side so a total of 14 rods can be stowed and be completely out of the way more storage like i said storage storage in this boat so we have one on each side this is additional storage um again everything it drains out moving to the front of the boat we're gonna go inside the console now. All right, one of my favorite parts of the boat here is the access to the console. So this is a double door. All right, so I could put a 45 quart Yeti cooler here for a seat. Doesn't interfere with our forward storage locker, okay? Again, everything is plumbed out. Great engineering on this boat. Water's not gonna pool up, all right? Now, if I want to get in the console, I just move my Yeti out of the way. Okay, full console room here. There was a um, porta potty in here ahead. We took that out because if you're going to use the bathroom, it's going to be over the side of the boat. Okay, we want this for storage and accessibility to work on stuff. We rewired this entire boat now with this console it's i'm six foot tall 
I can stand up in this console. Gives me plenty of room to work. And I'll just show you some of the wiring that we did here, okay? Um, flush mounted the Soluxes. We cleaned up all the wiring. Uh, the console is thick enough. We're able to zip tie everything and anchor it in position. Um, <clears throat> we put a group 27 house battery and a group 24 starting battery. This is hooked up to a Minn Kota Precision charger. That charges these two batteries, okay? Um, we have going over here, we put in a Blue C switch with an ACR. This allows the batteries to isolate when the engine is off so you'll never drain your starting battery. It also combines the two batteries so you'll charge them both when you're running. Uh, we cleaned up this, put a new fuse panel, redid our ground bar here. We have our five port ethernet box this is the radar, trolling motor, iPilot, Solux is all networked together in here. We have another precision battery three bank charger, okay? All these are fed to an external plug. So every day we plug in and all our batteries, all five batteries are always charged. Now, exciting part here, three group 31 trolling motor batteries. We were able to mount forward there is forward access here. All three trolling motor batteries are under the deck of the boat, completely out of the way. All right, now in the bow, where a lot of the fishing's getting done, my clients are casting up here a lot. Now, important thing, this gunnel and wall design allows you to walk right up to it. It hits you right in the thighs, perfect very safe i could fish in as rough of conditions as i could possibly be out in and i don't have to worry about anybody falling once you lock in and lean in you're safe now my previous boat the contender had a terrible wall in front that angled out so you could only walk up to here and you were you, you lost the ability to lean into the gunnel which is really unsafe so i highly recommend it will only own a boat where people can walk right into the gunnel and lean into it as they're fishing. Um, <clears throat> again, plenty. This boat keeps the width in the bow, so I still have plenty of room for a couple guys to be fishing up front. Um, anchor locker right here, massive locker. Right now, we just, it's early spring. We have our six life jackets and a throwable and extra rope in there. So this holds a lot and most important thing on this boat probably is our Minn Kota trolling motor, iPilot link. This is gonna spot lock. We're spot locked right now as we're filming this video. Um, so that's a huge component. When I'm cast net and bait, it's very easy for me to step up here with my cast net and be able to throw, walk anywhere in this boat if I wanna throw from the gunnel or if I'm throwing from the floor if it's rough out. The gunnel's not too high where it's not gonna interfere with my throw. Um, that pretty much does it for the interior specs of the boat. We're gonna have a look at the exterior of the 23 Pathfinder DC. So we're gonna have a look at the stern here and this boat has a 20 degree dead rise. Um, my previous boat was a contender that was a very deep V that was 24 and a half degrees and what you're going to find with those real deep V boats is that they ride great but when you're at drift they tend to rock very violently um, and then previous to that boat I owned a center console with a 14 degree dead rise and the 14 degree dead rise drifted great very stable at drift never had anybody get seasick in that boat however when it got choppy the boat would pound it you really had to slow it down it didn't cut the waves well you'd get very wet in that boat so that was the two extremes that i owned in my previous boats so the reason why i wanted this deep v pathfinder was the 20 degree dead rise is going to give us the perfect balance between ride and drifting stability you could also have a look at where our uh, mega imaging transducer 
is mounted for the Hummingbird Solex um, right under the bracket here. So that gives a clear obstruction free, free view of both sides because the outboard is not gonna interfere. If you have a boat where you're mounting the transducer directly in line with the outboard, you may have to run two transducers because it's not gonna be able to see through the other side of the outboard. And the last thing I wanna talk about is you'll see this extension cord in this boat. This common question get asked a lot is how do you charge your batteries for your trolling motor? Because those batteries are completely isolated. They're not hooked up to the engine alternator. Therefore, they're discharging and not recharging. So every night when we're done fishing, we plug in the shore power or to an uh, extension cord to the house. That gets plugged into our three bank charger. And actually I have two battery chargers I showed you under the console. And all five of my batteries, the three trolling motor batteries, starting and house battery, are all charged every night. So every time we go to the boat in the morning, we know we have a full battery charge. Thank you for watching. I hope you liked this video. If you did, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Check out Real Cash Charters on Instagram. I'm Mike Roy. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for more content.